Welcome to the Hold My Spot podcast. My name is Ethan. And I'm Matt. We go to concerts and we tell, we tell you, you all about them. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess you I'm, tell them. Yeah, that's right. I know that you think you're the big, bad concert goer, I but might be. It just th- might be. things have changed around here. Have they? Because we just got back from a concert together. Indeed we did. I'm back. I'm back in a big we'll see. spot. We'll see. Oh, we saw. Because <laughs> tonight was um, a very, very meaningful night for me. This was this was a, a big show. It was a 10th anniversary show. Yeah, special too. Yeah. So it may never happen again. It can never happen again. That's, well, it's true. It can't be a 10th anniversary, but it's the, the band H-H-10. may never, we may never see the band again. We don't know. And we don't know. We don't know. It seemed, seemed a little definitive, though, from what they were saying. That's what we thought back in 2018. That's true. Because we saw a band tonight that has been inactive since 2018. We saw the Hotelier celebrating the 10th anniversary of Home, like No Place Is There, released back in 2013. Co-headlining a tour with Foxing, mm-hmm. celebrating the 10th anniversary of Albatross, which to was the day, literally to this the day, today, whatever it was today's date, I don't even know. Uh, time, <laughs> time is a funny this day. This day, I think it's November 12th. It might be the 12th. It's yeah. an even number today. Yeah, because I've been looking forward to this one for months. We bought the tickets for this. Well, I should correct that. Yeah, you uh, bought the tickets. I for this. bought the tickets for this back. And I was in being June. A good sport. And I bought four tickets, and I basically mansplained to Matt (laughs) that he was going to this against his will. And here we are. And basically against my will meant, uh, hey, Matt, do you want to go to this concert? And I said, yeah, sure. I don't think I even, I just bought them. (laughs) (laughs) I I appreciate you retroactively, like, putting it like I was so kind and respectful. Yeah, that's true. I just clicked. Yeah. I just That's just purchase. not part of your persona. No, no, it's, it's absolutely not. Yeah. But it was um, it was a big night. The hotel year has been inactive since 2018. The last album was in 2016. They haven't toured since 2018. While Foxing has remained fairly active um, since that time, this is the hotel year's first tour since then. So it was a really big deal, and we're only um, I don't know a week or so into it, and. We saw them at the Roxy at Mahal's. Yeah. First time there. Your first time there. Yeah. Where, who else did you see there? I saw a census fail there. That's right. Maybe two months ago. Yeah. So it's one of our favorite spots. It is, definitely. In, in all the area. They did a really nice job there. So Mahal's now has, what, three venues? Uh, yeah, I guess because they do have some. Oh, they have the apartment upstairs. Yeah. They have that front room, which is like the old uh, Mahal's. May Halls. May and yes. then we have the Roxy in the back, which is a big 800 person venue. Is it's, that what we kind of figured out? Yeah, I think so. It's a great spot. Every spot is GA, which means that a pit is possible at all times. That's what Ethan's all about. Yeah, it's more, all about the pit. More on that in a sec, but we'll um, we'll take you through it chronologically like we always do. Well, like we attempt to do. Um, Forgive us yeah. if we stray, I wouldn't say we stray from the path. Hardly do anything it's, chronologically. It is our intent. <laughs> I can't sit here and say we stick to it, but you know, whatever. Well, we actually had a little bonus tonight. We had a little extra time because it's a Sunday. Yeah. So we went out and grabbed some uh, pre-show food. Oh, what a luxury. Some wings and some beers. and uh, The pre-concert dinner oh, is... It's the uh, best. It's, it's rare. It doesn't just, happen enough. Yeah, there, there's something to it. There's something special yeah. about it. It's that Christmas Eve energy that we've it talked is, about yeah. before. It really gets you amped up. Yeah, we went to Winking Lizards in, in Lakewood, Ohio. All the TVs were set up with all the 4 p.m. NFL yeah, we games. Yeah, to watch the football games. Had some chicken wings, had some IPAs, like yeah. people in their Got 30s base are known to do. just right. Yes. Well, your base <laughs> was already, your base was just fine. Yeah, I didn't intend on uh, drinking today. Oh, but, yeah? Uh, but I did. It's a football Sunday. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? What can you have expected? It's been a great day, um, lively. This isn't a, an NFL-based podcast, but it was a lively bunch of games today. Wow. It provided, yeah. it provided a nice backdrop, and, like, the energy was just there as we were prepping for the show, and our buddy Cheese 
<laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to release it, but he was recording the conversation at the table oh, yeah. at Lincoln Lizard. As Ethan's oral history of the emo movement. Well, it was, I was only, I was providing the oral history of the whole genre yeah. of emo because my twin brother was going to the concert tonight because he was also one of the victims of my four ticket purchase on that fateful day back in June. And I thought it would be um, just the kind thing to do to give him an oral history of the genre that he he's never really... Um, we came of age in the 2000s where emo had become suddenly popular, this now known as third wave emo. We didn't take to it then and there was a negative connotation for years. And sure. I know that's different than your experience and it was like, it hit you at the perfect time and we just had a slightly different experience. We were rebellious and maybe not the right age for it. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was important to tell him about where, where this all came from with the first wave back in DC emanating from the hardcore punk scene and how Ian McKay was involved and how this spanned out to the second wave in the Midwest with Cap and Jazz and Sunny Day Real Estate and eventually American Football and then the third wave and how it all just lines up and how Hotelier and Fox and fit perfectly into the fourth, fourth wave, wave of emo, the emo revival of the late aughts and early teens that I very fondly think of. And it's it's very re retroactive for me, and this is where we're going off the beaten path, but <laughs> we're also not skipping to the end of the concert as well. Setting the stage, hopefully. Um, it's, a, it's the wave of emo that I enjoy the most I think because I, I love the 90s aesthetic that it was very inspired by, the second wave, but then it also drew from the third wave and took a lot of those catchy hooks and um, just such melodic songs. And I feel like it combined it in a way that was just perfect for me. And that's where Hotelier really perfectly slots in and, and Foxy to some extent as well, though they're a bit more um, mishmashing indie rock, post-rock and, and emo yeah. all together in a very interesting way. Um, so that, that's where I came to the show from. You came to the show a bit more from a, a yeah. fresh perspective. Right. What did you, did you know anything about these two bands? Only from, time? you know, when you bought the tickets, I listened to the albums uh, a couple times and then, you know, just the last couple of days I have, I sort of missed the uh, fourth wave of emo music, um, doing adult things as, uh, as I had gotten out of, uh, school and uh, was trying to establish myself a little bit so I sort of missed that whole I don't know almost a full decade of music of that genre I just wasn't focused in on it um, so yeah I mean I went into this tonight with a uh, open mind and I liked what I had heard on the albums when I listened uh, to them and um, I was happy I went I mean definitely something that I'll um, add a couple of the songs to my favorites and keep them in the rotation yeah I mean, it. Who there's not many people that are lucky enough to ride every wave of the emo genre. Um, you were lucky to really ride hard the third wave and third wave. You've I been did, super yeah. active during this fifth wave yeah. that we're currently in. True. So, I think it's. I'm actually kind of jealous. You get to. You're such an avid fan of the genre. You get to like. There's a whole. 10 year period or you know roughly five ten year period that is just available to dig back into that you're probably there's a lot of stuff in there that you're probably likely to enjoy that'll be brand new to you yeah which is great finding and then it's also sad when you find like an awesome album or an awesome band and then you realize oh they broke up yeah and that, <laughs> I that totally is, missed uh, them that's definitely the story with a lot of the fourth wave emo bands is that it was very underground at yeah. that point. It was very emo meets indie, kind of like the 90s was. And a lot of those bands had to disband because it wasn't it wasn't financially yeah. viable. And for the hotelier, they talked about it on stage Yeah, tonight. which is actually cool to kind of get a peek into what that's like. The tax statements? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Release the tax statements. <laughs> so why don't we, uh, why don't we jump in from beginning to end? We, we got to the Roxy, and we got there basically right at the beginning of Emperor X. Yep. The opening act for the co-headlining 
yeah. set that was both foxing and, and he was Italia. just solo uh, yeah guitar and, and him but you were saying that his album is actually a full band yeah he he is i i apologize in advance because i don't remember his full name um but he is the creative force it's really his project and all of his albums have a full backing band but tonight uh, it was just him, a guitar, and some backing digital tracks. Yeah. And he sounded good. He's got a great voice. Yeah, we probably, were in the back of the venue. I mean, it definitely projected out and sounded great back there. Yeah, he probably played um, seven, eight songs, and the crowd seemed to be receptive. It was a very just good... It felt like it was easing everybody in to what was going to be a pretty intense night. And in general, I felt like the whole night just was very linear. Everything just like built in a way. Like the energy was never up here and then down there. It yeah. was always up and to the yeah, right. Yeah, pretty consistent. Yeah. So that set goes super well. And then after that, we start really maneuvering our way into the crowd for the foxing set, which right. I actually didn't know yeah, was just it gonna was gonna be the foxing set, right? right? Yeah, because with the co-headlining uh, co tour, they switch back and forth and Ethan the whole time was really hoping that Foxing was going to be the next band and then uh, Hotelier being the, the closer mm -hmm. and uh, well, it re he really lucked out because that's exactly how it went tonight. Yeah, we were watching the sound check guys up there and I was like do they seem like Foxing guys <laughs> or do they seem like Hotelier guys? Like, I, 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 Because I, you can obviously tell the difference <laughs> i was like looking for like what's their t-shirts say but nobody was wearing a foxing or a hotelier suit i didn't know until the band walked on stage i'm like that's not christian holding so i guess this is the foxing which is perfect not to say that um um i didn't want to see the foxing set but for me and i think a lot of people in the crowd the what we were looking forward to most was the hotelier set because them being inactive has almost built up their myth. Um, they're, they're a legend of the fourth wave. And now you've got the fifth wave here thriving. A lot of kids who didn't like emo, weren't even like at the right age, when fourth, waves of, fourth wave was happening, are digging in and they're understanding bands like Hotelier and Foxing and Modern Baseball and the Wonder Years who's still actively touring and, and many others that I'm not naming here and there's um there's a legacy there and people want to be a part of them coming back together like this but anyways uh foxing comes out and they start playing the albatross from beginning to end i think it was like a 14 song set and sounds about right it was a it was a really cool setup they had like this great video screen in the back that would happen throughout the night not just for their set but for the hotelier set as well yeah they had a lot more like clips of videos playing throughout mm -hmm. all the songs and i mean it definitely adds a lot to a show when you have that visual aid in the background mm -hmm. and um they had it was a projector projecting the image on the whole band not just on a screen mm -hmm. so um it was sort of cool to see that too yeah it was um their music is so different than the hoteliers. It's um, it's post rock meets indie meets emo. So it's it oscillates. It's uh, at, at some moments very chill and very atmospheric. At other yeah. moments, one of the the, the guitar starts doing uh, a screamo yeah. portion of the song, and Which that know, was great. In other moments, it's the lead singer just screaming his heart out, saying why. Why don't you love me back? And yeah. it just feels like an emo anthem. And the mother effer just pulls out his freaking trumpet. Yeah, that, a couple that, times. That was probably the coolest part, yeah. is that the lead singer, and I wish his, I knew his name, I'm terrible with names, but he would just be belting out the words, and then he would just pull out the trumpet and just start laying down some notes. Yeah, it's awesome to be so multi-talented. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, obviously we can understand you, you and I being oh, musicians. Right. Obviously, yeah, we're totally musicians. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> you know, talent respects talent, of right, course. Right, right. Were there, um, for you, were there, them, like, Foxing being new to you, other than, you know, hearing the album a little bit, um, any standout moments for you? Anything that really sticks with you? 
Well, there's the the one song where the uh, there was that sort of screaming aspect. I really liked that. I, I don't know the name of the song. I have to probably check it out and uh, put it in the comments. But um, they really used all the different elements of the emo kind of vibe, and um, it was cool to see the. You know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a brass instrument. Yes, you, you are. Know, you know that I love my, my saxophone I and was songs. hoping you would enjoy that. Yeah. Going into the show, it's like, so. if Matt appreciates nothing other than the trumpet, then <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, so having the trumpet in there was really cool, too. Something a little different. I mean, I haven't seen many other bands that of the genre using brass instruments, so it was cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Uh, not not a lot of takeaways, um, but they're a band that I appreciated their music, and I'll definitely dive back through. Yeah. yeah. Anything that stuck out for you? I just think what's so cool about Foxing is it shows how expansive the emo genre is. I think um, for a lot of people, understandably, emo gets associated with what was really popular in the mid-2000s, like... Um, newfound glory and maybe people even think of Fall Out Boy like that My Chemical Romance for sure and that's you know that that's all true it, it is all associated but when you think about the genre's roots and where it was in the 80s and the 90s and the 2010s what's always consistent about it is that the lyrics and the way they are sung it's very emotive <laughs> Not to be too on the nose here. Um, I wonder where they got the emo and emo genre. I don't know. I've never read into it too much. Yeah, it's interesting. But that's the one thing that's true. And it's almost like everything else around that is allowed to change. And Foxing definitely plays around with that. Because they're not sticking to what is the drumming template, like the rhythmic template for what you might think of emo from the 2000s. They're not sticking to the chord progressions that you might think of emo from the 2000s. They're not sticking to the tempo that you might associate with emo. They're trying out all different types of genres and they showed that throughout their set that they are not to be nailed down. And I just think that's just so cool that they're in so many different places and yet it's all in one that everybody in that crowd can relate to and can tie back to the genre that we all know and love so and even yeah. though they, they've gone in very different directions since then they've they've done nothing but experiment they've uh, that album shows that and then what they've done afterwards have shown that but they'll always have this connection to the people that appreciate the emo music because there's just something very uh, heartfelt about the lyrics so yeah I thought it was a really cool set yeah it was a really um, it just felt like the energy was just building, you know? It was. Energy sure. was really building. I didn't feel like we crescendoed at any point. Just felt like we were always like once we got up into the right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then cool. they uh they head to the back and then the hotelier guys start sound checking, also not wearing hotelier shirts. Yeah. How so, did you know they were gonna be the hotelier sound check guys? It, it could have been any it could have been Aerosmith <laughs> yeah. at that point. It could have been anybody. But it was, uh, it was actually a pretty quick turnaround, and then they were out there. Yeah, and um, they also did a really good uh, presentation with uh, the video in the background. It, it was like some home movie, um, like early, I don't know, like a 2005 camera, that camcorder that they yeah. were using. Um, you know, they showed the house from the cover uh, of the album, and then a lot of other things like with like suburbia that they were capturing. Yeah. Um, and during all the different songs, they were putting different clips up there. And it was just cool to see. It was a cool vibe. It was a cool feel. Um, and I definitely appreciate the, you know, the AV aspect of any, you know, set. I think there should be um, something else going on in the background when the music is playing. Yeah. Yeah, it, they get, it only it adds added a to it yeah, in this case, exactly. for sure. It's a, for like sure. nostalgic, I mean, 10-year anniversary, it was nostalgic of that era, it was nostalgic of the album when it first came out. Yeah. It just uh, was really well presented. Yeah. What's interesting about their set list is that, though they were celebrating 
the 10th anniversary of their 2013 album, Home Like No Place Is There, the first five songs actually came off their other two albums, which I actually learned about this a couple days prior. I don't, I'm not typically one to like dig into the set list before, but I was just, I couldn't help it. I was super curious. <laughs> I was reading some articles and some concert reviews the days before, and I was a bit taken aback at first that they just weren't digging right into the nine song, um, just gut punch of an album that is home like no place is there. But now that I realize it, and like I've experienced it and I listened to the set list as like as a playlist on Spotify the last couple of days, they were really just staying true to the theme of building the energy up and to the right. Yeah. And um, playing like Goodness Part 1 and Goodness Part 2 is part of that five song, essentially like intro. Um, they really just got us ramped up and I, I had to find, I found my way to the center of the pit within like, Second, You're almost right away. Almost like right away at, during the first song. Like I knew I was always gonna find my way there. I figured it maybe be around the the second song. But I was like, I can't no, wait another were, second. You were right in. You were too giddy. I've been envisioning it <laughs> for months now. Um, wasn't gonna waste another second. But yeah, the first five songs were so great. Um, just like a great primer, so that when they kicked off introduction to an album. Which <laughs> mentioned earlier, my twin brother Logan, who was there with us, who's new to the band, I would he likes to sing along, but he doesn't know the words. Yeah. <laughs> so I would grab him and I would give him tips. I'd say, This next song is the introduction of their album. The song is called Introduction to an Album. And he said, Okay, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> then I'd say the first words are and they're important are open the curtains. He's like, Okay, got it. <laughs> and then Christian would belt it out and we would just sing it together and Logan would be a little bit off time because he doesn't know the song but he would figure it out credit to him yeah and once Christian belted open the curtains it was just it was a melee it was on yeah from, from that moment forward there was yeah there were breaths taken but it was it was non-stop action from that moment forward. What was it, um, we got a little separated at that point. What what was going on over in your area? <laughs> Not a lot was going on in my area. No? No, I mean, uh, a couple tall dudes standing in front of me as is normal. What's new? Yeah, What's new? it's always gonna happen. I just have to accept my fate. A um, couple, couple people were dancing along over there, you know, uh, but really not a lot by me which is what I wanted I did not want to be in the pit yeah um, it, it I don't know it just not knowing the music and then jumping into the pit and trying to sing along like Logan was that's not really my bag so yeah I was uh, more of an observer tonight yeah it's um it's a gutsy move to do that credit to Logan yeah uh, gosh I don't even know where to begin with discussing this set it was a uh, it was very meaningful. It was... Yeah, I looked over several times and saw you singing along to pretty much every song. Yeah, and here's the thing. I actually don't know the <laughs> words. Um, like, I know, like, the big words in the choruses, but the verses, you just kind of piece Well, it. that's most people. You just, like, if you ever you just piece standing it together. at a show, most people are just singing the chorus, and then they're really quiet during the verses. Yeah. It was um, it was one of those pits that was just very. Um, it's my kind of pit where it's aggressive when it wants to be, when the song calls for it, and it's very communal. Otherwise, it's very um, arms around each other, sing along. We're really experiencing something together. This is a shared moment. We felt these things while listening to these songs. We felt them while not. There's shared life experiences here that are implied by us connecting to these lyrics. And uh, yeah, it was just special. Just being in the pit with a bunch of people that really love this band and clearly appreciated yeah, I, I felt that a out. lot. I mean, the people that were there were the hardcore fans that have been waiting for them to come back. Yeah. 
So maybe it'll be something where every five years or something like that, they'll pop back on the radar. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe. I hope but, so. But uh, I don't even know if you can count on that. I don't I don't want to root for Christian to be bad at poker because <laughs> that's how he makes his living now. But part of me is like, man, like maybe lose a couple hands and have to write a new song. <laughs> but I get it. It's um, the, the music that they wrote during that uh, five-year stretch is just such vulnerable fucking, excuse my language, but like just gut-wrenchingly tragic music. I mean, one of the most famous lines of their discography is, I called in sick from your funeral. Yeah. I mean, that's just a, whew, that's a, that's a hell of a line. Um, but yeah, highlights from the nine song set, gosh, I mean, Introduction to an album is unbelievable. When he says, uh, I had to stop cussing, but when it all builds up to crescendo of saying the F word, it's, it's an unbelievable in the crowd. We all love it. Um, scope of all this rebuilding, when he when it all breaks down, we all scream. I made a promise that my eyes would stay shut. It's an unbelievable, cathartic moment. I can't say enough about the closer, Dendron. Uh, the breakdown, we all scream, wake me, wake me yeah. up, it's, I was almost, in, I, I don't, I look for emotion, like in all songs, like I want to have an emotional reaction to every song I listen to, I kind of wish I would, like having that brain gasm, goosebumps, like you want to get that from all songs, but you just, you can't force it, you know, um, but that's one of those songs that I just get it in voluntarily when I listen to it at home, and then when you listen to it with a group of 799 <laughs> yeah. other people. Was it you, sold out? Uh, I mean, if it wasn't, it was as close to as possible. It felt jam-packed Yeah, it there. was pretty busy. I don't know how many more people we really could fit in yeah. there. Yeah, it was, whew. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lively show. It was. For sure. It was great. Um, gosh, I, I mean, I can go on and on, but I don't want to... I don't want to bore y'all. Yeah, anything, anything else? Anything else final. to say up to you? Um, your merch seemed cool. You ended up buying your what second yeah. band shirt ever? Ugh. Yeah, I think. Uh, what's this? I got this. Oh so oh so and oh gosh, this really might be. You're very selective with your uh, wardrobe. I only buy fourth wave emo. <laughs> Fourth wave emo or no deal. Which, speaking of Oso oh Oso, oh we see them in a couple weeks. December 10th. December 10th, yeah. PD yeah, on November away. 15th. Right. Heart Attack Man on December 30th. Yeah, that'll be our closeout show for the year. We got a great stretch. And then, mm. um, I don't think you're going, but we're going to see, um... Oh, jeez. I forgot who it was. What day? What event? Um, it's at the Agora. It's uh, this year. Story of the year playing Page Avenue. Oh, I thought that was next year. That is next year. But that's like the January third, and then the next day is Motion City Soundtrack. Can't wait for that. That's yeah, be awesome. January fifth. Yeah. that'd be great. Or there must be the fourth and the fifth. It's like the next day. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And I'm making a road trip down to Missouri later this week to visit my younger brother who works for the University of Missouri and we're thinking maybe uh, Thursday night when we start the drive maybe find a pit find a pit <laughs> <laughs> why not if we're gonna drive from Cleveland to Columbia Missouri there's gotta be a pit along be a the pit way somewhere there has to be on has Thursday to be a pit. yeah I guess we just gotta time it just right see what's going on in Indianapolis I guess I gotta do my research yeah yeah I don't know I mean Crap, yeah, Columbus from to Indianapolis, that's, that might actually be a decent that's like, four hours. Like, yeah, I was going to say. We might actually have to find something sooner, you know? It might yeah, be, somewhere along the state line of Ohio and Indiana, I mean. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot There's going lots of pits on, going on out there. A lot going on in, in, cold, those, in cold water, Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> those farmer's maybe, fields. Maybe Dayton, though. I think Dayton's, Do you actually go through Dayton, though? I don't know, I'm just kind of hoping. I think you kind of skirt Dayton. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta do my research then. Yeah, I find a pit. What's what. Find a pit. We're gonna find, find a pit. the nastiest, grungiest pit ever. We're gonna <laughs> wish we did it. We're I gonna, hope you do. We're gonna regret every moment. Yeah. <laughs> a review of that pit is forthcoming. Yeah. 
if we can make it out alive. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's been a fun night and we've got a fun stretch here with PDN Wednesday. So yep. we'll be talking to you again then. Um, and yeah, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this review here and go see a hotelier if they're coming to a town near you. I yeah, mean, highly recommend. Highly yeah. recommend. Because if you don't see them now, maybe you won't ever see them. Yeah, you don't know when your chance is going to come next. So. so. If you, if you do it in Cleveland, we'll make sure to hold a spot for you. Until next time. Thanks, guys. Take care.